2020 has come to a close and 2021 is right around the corner. I'm Taylor Brower and today I'm going to be talking about what programming languages I recommend you learn in 2021 that are going to make you a well-rounded software engineer and a more marketable software engineer. I'm going to discuss what the various languages are that I recommend and how long you should generally spend learning these technologies. So let's check it out. Number one is HTML and CSS. I know this is a bundle, but they kind of go together. So I'm gonna use an analogy for all these topics, which relates to building a house. So HTML is like your foundation and your wooden structure frame of your house. It has support beams that hold the whole house up. CSS is like the little fine measurements and customizations. So how tall your door frame is how wide your windows are, or what color your kitchen is. So when it comes to HTML, I recommend you really focus on getting familiar with the different tags. So know what the head and body tags are, know what the DOM is, how to use the DOM, know some kind of niche tags like video tag, map tag, and the search field tag. Knowing these things will put you ahead of the competition a little bit. And for CSS, know the selectors so that you can pull things from the DOM quickly, like the ID, the name, and other attributes. Also, know how to structure your div elements, giving your divs meaningful names. That way you can apply CSS directly to them with meaningful names. In CSS, it's also a good idea to learn SAS, which is an extension of the CSS language. SAS is being used more and more in applications in the industry, and knowing the syntax is really gonna help you out. You should spend between one to two months learning and getting familiar with HTML and CSS in order for it to like really stick. So that's a good starting place. CSS and HTML isn't necessarily going to make you the most amazing software engineer yet, but bear with me, we're getting there. Number two is JavaScript. JavaScript has been very popular for many years now, and it is only growing in popularity. It's going to be getting more popular in 2021. And going to the house analogy, JavaScript is like the wiring and the plumbing of your house. It is responsible for managing and injecting data into your HTML pages, which is really gonna bring them to life. It's important to understand how to manage data in JavaScript to create it, read it. And I recommend really getting familiar with creating data in arrays, whether that be number arrays, string arrays, object arrays, or even a combination of all three. Understand how to, how to build complex arrays how to read from complex arrays in a loop, and then get familiar with special methods like finding, filtering, and mapping through that data so that you can manipulate it a little further. Also, understand the single responsibility principle, which is a method does one thing and one thing only. So don't cram a bunch of logic that do different things into one method. Separate it out if you have a method finding and filtering on an array, probably best to break those out into two separate methods and then name them accordingly. Get very good at separating out logic and commenting it accordingly. That's gonna help you out tremendously. Okay, so you should spend at least three months in JavaScript, which is kind of a long time, but it's gonna be your moneymaker. You're gonna be using a lot of JavaScript and knowing the language really well is gonna help you out a lot in 2021. Okay, so what's next? Number four, I think, is frameworks. So you know HTML, you know CSS, JavaScript. Now it's time to dive into a framework, and the popular JavaScript frameworks are Angular, Vue, and React. Pick one of these and learn it inside and out. A framework is just a template that allows you to get started making your app quicker. It bundles HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in many occasions so that you can just get up and running. Um, don't worry about learning more, more than one 
just stick to one and learn it inside and out. I'd spend between one to two months figuring out a framework, learning it, mastering it, all in one to two months time. All right, so after that, you're in pretty good shape. Like you're a pretty good front end engineer at this point. Next is back end or API technology. And there's two that I recommend. There's Node.js plus Express or Spring Boot. And Node.js for the web server side of it and Express is the API endpoint part of Node.js. So those two kind of go together. But Node.js and Spring Boot separately. Pick one. Now, a backend framework, going back to our house analogy, is like an alarm company for your house. So say a window breaks, the alarm company is contacted and the alarm company can kind of see what window is broken and then they can kind of take action from there, all without you manually having to contact the alarm company. All of it happens automatically behind the scenes. This is kind of synonymous with how an API or backend technology works. So if you choose Node.js, you're gonna be really comfortable with it because it is JavaScript based and you've used JavaScript a lot uh, at this point. So that'll, that'll be a really nice technology to go into. However, Spring Boot is Java based, so it is a completely different language at this point. So there's a bit of a learning curve associated with Spring Boot. I recommend going the Spring Boot route because it is used in the industry more. A lot of companies use Spring Boot because of the Java behind it makes it very stable, very powerful. It can leverage object-oriented programming that Java provides. Therefore, you're gonna see it a lot. And don't get mixed up with Java and JavaScript. They're completely separate. Java is to JavaScript like car is to carpet. It's a good thing to remember because it really separates the, the difference there. And for anyone that you pick, it's important to understand how to create API endpoints, how to create data models or entities, how to create server side logic, which is really going to be your business logic. It's important to understand how to interface with the file system on the OS and how to read and write files to and from. And it is important to understand unit testing. Unit testing plays a big part in backend systems. Get good at it. Understand unit testing well. I recommend you spend one to two months learning backend services, getting really proficient at backend technology. Okay, so next up is databases. At this point, you're pretty much a full stack engineer. Databases is really going to be the next part in taking the data that you've created in your API and making it persist long-term. So there's two technologies that I recommend you learn and I recommend you choose one of these, MongoDB or SQL. And SQL has various flavors like Postgres, MySQL, or Oracle SQL. Pick one and learn it. If you go the MongoDB route, you're gonna be more comfortable because it works on JSON and it's a little easier syntax to understand. By this point, you would have seen JSON in API because API uses JSON to pass data from endpoints. So there's that route. Also SQL, and SQL has a little bit of a different syntax. Well, quite a lot different. So there's gonna be a learning curve there since it's something new. I recommend going that route though because SQL is way more dominant in the industry than a MongoDB based database. At knowing SQL is, is gonna be really help you out. A lot of systems use SQL and there's probably no place you're gonna go that you don't see some SQL. So knowing it would be really good. A few topics for both is know how relationships work, one to many, many to one, one to one. Those are really gonna help you a lot. Know joins and unions, know how to select distinct attributes out of a list of data. So getting um, all the unique values, 
and understand sorting. I almost forgot to go to our house analogy, but a database is like the fire department or the police department for your house. So a window breaks, your alarm company is called, the alarm company either contacts the police department or the fire department, and then they are on standby waiting for a request and then they act accordingly. That's kind of how a database works for an application. I would recommend you spend about a month knowing either MongoDB or SQL, learning it and getting really proficient at it. Okay, so the last programming language that I recommend for 2021, it's not a programming language, but it's a technology called Docker. And Docker is going to unlock a lot of scalability features for your application. So in relation to our house analogy, Docker is like putting roller skates under your house, on your foundation, so that your house can move anywhere you want it to move. If you want your house to sit on your neighbor's front lawn, you can do that. <laughs> and that's kind of how Docker works in a real life application. So some things to know about Docker is understand how to create a Docker file. The Docker files use YAML configuration language and getting familiar with that is gonna be a big benefit. Understanding the Docker compose command, which is gonna run that YAML file and it's gonna build or tear down um, your Docker environment really easily. Understand voluming in the YAML file so that you can mount either in-memory databases or mount the database to use for like unit testing and stuff like that. Or also understand ports in a Docker file. Ports is really going to help you manage the communication channels between your UI, your API, and your database. That's gonna be really beneficial for you. And then after you've done all that, move on to something like Kubernetes and also look into cloud technology platforms like AWS or Google Cloud Platform. I recommend you spend as much time as possible in these areas. These areas are really the the future of web development, it's, it's where the industry is going more and more. And the more you understand these concepts, the better off you're gonna be and that's gonna really make you a marketable software engineer. All right, so that's it for the software and the programming languages that I recommend you learn in 2021. This is just one path that you can take. There are many in this industry, so don't take this as like, set in stone this is like the absolute truth you have to do this no this is just one possibility so if i can just help at least one person in this and um or or more that would be great like that's my goal i just want to provide um s some insight into how to get your foot in the door in this industry um, it can be a little intimidating so um, I, I hope this helped you. Thank you so much for watching and I'm looking forward to 2021. Thanks guys and I'll see you in the next video.